of direction. This is bridge. We're proceeding at slow speed at about five knots. The course is one nine eight through over. the Mercury Station on Gran Canary Island in the Spanish archipelago off of the African coast. It's midday at Station 5 in Kano, Nigeria, deep in the continent of Africa. Flight data recorded here at Kano and at Zanzibar on Africa's east coast will relay through this transmitting station to London and then on to America. to the southeast of Kano, beyond the Zanzibar station, the ship's bell of the coastal sentry tolls the twilight of day in the emptiness of the Indian Ocean. To the east, some 2,500 miles from the coastal sentry, dust blankets the network's eight station at Muche, near Perth, Western Australia. Halfway around the world okay. from Cape Canaveral. The printout, call display. Okay, that's fine. Just uh, tweak it up on here. Today, February 20th, is fast fading over the Australian tracking sites at Muche and Woomera. And when Glenn arrives, tomorrow we'll greet him. But north and east across the Pacific, Far beyond the Mercury Station on the coral atoll called Canton Island, February 20th is just minutes old on Hawaii's garden island of Kauai, and there men prepare for the arrival of Friendship 7. Eastward again, deeper into the day that will soon awaken over the Americas. Eastward to the Gulf of California, and to the Mercury Station at Wymus, Mexico. Real good, just waiting for liftoff. M and OTM, status green, proceeding with pre-pass calibrations. North of Mexico, in the pre-dawn along the west coast of the United States, the mountaintop station at Point Arguello, California, waits out the long countdown, ready to track John Glenn. All right, Roger, I hate. What is the present count? All right, Roger. Southeast now, to the farmlands of Texas, where the station at Corpus Christi continues its preparations for flight. I must go in Texas, please. Hey, Fermate. Roger, all systems, would you please commence pre-flight calibrations at this time since the countdown is progressing normally. Advise me when you have completed them. Far to the north and east of Corpus Christi beats the heart of the worldwide Mercury Network the computing and communication center that bonds it into a working entity. This is the Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland. Through here funnels the voice and teletype communications that link the global stations to Mercury control. The computers enable men to reach judgments within the flashes of time allowed for control of a spacecraft that moves faster than a brain can react. Throughout the flight, the computers will generate recommendations on whether the mission should continue or be aborted. They will determine locations of the spacecraft, the time it should begin re-entry, the point at which it will land. And the most vital of these findings will be transmitted instantaneously to Cape Canaveral. Around the world, all is ready. 
the men, the stations, the space vehicle. And now reporters learn from the astronaut's information officer if the most vital of all elements is ready, the man himself, John Glenn. At the same time, as far as NASA was concerned, even though we were trying to provide as much information as possible, we had a number of secure areas ourselves. One of them was the crew quarters. The crew quarters was the holy of holies, and only those duly endowed could ever put their head inside. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, it was a key part of the operation, and uh, we had the press there with the television and with the, with the writers to uh, report live when John left from Hangar S to go to the pad. Then, of course, uh, all the coverage at the pad was picked up from the cameras down there going back to the press pool and with the announcements from Shorty Powers coming from here at Mission Control as the countdown proceeded. What are the thoughts of a man about to rocket into history? Glenn is the astronaut, the man who will challenge space but he is just one member of an international scientific endeavor that requires the genius and skills of some 40,000 other men and women scattered throughout the world. From the engineers and technicians who produce the space vehicle to the crews now preparing to launch it. From the tracking experts who will chart his voyage around the globe to the sailors now waiting at sea to recover him. Behind this day stands years of preparation of research and testing, of planning and training. And the purpose of it all is knowledge. Knowledge of space and of how effectively man and spacecraft can function together in its hostile environment. Knowledge that will serve as the basis for space explorations of the future. Hard-won knowledge of benefit to all men, bought by sacrifice and dedication and courage. Now, just a handful of minutes remain until the spacecraft crew on the service tower call for the pilot of Friendship 7. I was quite taken back uh, when I saw the Mercury spacecraft for the first time. Uh, in my mind, I was thinking that this was a large vehicle, and it was only nine feet uh, tall and six feet wide at the base. And looking into the uh, hatch where John Glenn was going to ride, it looked like a, a telephone booth uh, with all the equipment packed behind him. Nickname that originally started with uh, John Glenn. He called me the Pat Führer, and he said uh, the reason he mentioned that is because. Uh,